long-awaited bout between Julio Cesar Chavez and Hector Macho Camacho will finally take place. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Albert, and I'd like to welcome you to Time Bomb, Chavez versus Camacho. After years of political bickering and personal mudslinging, two of the world's most exciting fighters will finally face each other in the ring. This bout is more than just a battle between two great undefeated fighters. It is, more accurately, a war between fire and ice. Two conflicting personalities. When Chavez steps into the ring, you'll see one of boxing's most consummate professionals. Raised in rural Mexico, Chavez's quiet personality and altruistic nature does not seem in keeping with the ring exploits that have made him one of the most revered athletes in the sport today. In Camacho's quarter, you'll see one of the sport's most flamboyant fighters. Battling his way out of the tough streets of Spanish Harlem, Camacho's outlandish outfits, eccentric behavior, and occasional brushes with the law often overshadow his great natural ability. Back with the swift combination of the head. Chavez versus Camacho is one of boxing's most classic confrontations. For throughout its long history, the sport has been governed by the rules styles make fights. And the styles of these two men are as different as their personalities. Chavez is a power puncher. Camacho is a boxer with blinding combinations. Chavez stalks his opponent. Camacho runs and guns. Chavez rarely shows emotion, while Camacho fights with exuberant passion. In boxing, the difference between the great and the very good is ever so small. An almost indistinguishable quality that can be revealed only in the heat of a combat such as this one. In the course of this show, we'll discover why the fight between these two men was inevitable. An explosion waiting to happen. For years, the boxing world has been baffled by Hector Macho Camacho. Confounded by his antics, confused by his ever-changing personality. Some believe he's a charismatic champion and one of boxing's most fun-loving characters. Others say he's an unpredictable showboat and a self-destructive troublemaker. But everybody agrees on one thing. He is, without question, the most flamboyant fighter in the ring today. Control, and that's something that not even the president has. Gotta take some film for I'll take off my clothes later. Now. <laughs> that was nice. I see a, uh, a successful guy like Macho Camacho with Ferraris, Lamborghinis, you know, and anywhere he goes, he's a show. Even I don't try to be a show all the time. But I can't help with the way I dress and the attention I attract. The Puerto Rican-born Camacho grew up in New York's tough Spanish Harlem. There, at an early age, he began his fighting career. Not in the ring, but in the streets and in the schools. I was expelled. Expelled is not the word. I was thrown out. <laughs> okay, that's too educated for me, you know? I was thrown out of six schools. I was uh, I visited six psychiatrists. And they never found nothing crazy in me. They didn't want him in school because of all the fighting. He would fight girls, boys. He'd punch a kid and give him a black eye. He didn't care. He would fight kids much bigger than him. He would say, Mommy, I don't like fighting smaller kids. I like fighting bigger kids. That way they won't say that I'm taking advantage of them. The 118-pound open champion. Camacho. Camacho channeled his fighting spirit into amateur boxing. And by the time he was 17 years old, he'd won three Golden Glove championships. Then he turned pro. The first check he brought home was $450. He said, Mommy, out of this $150, 75 is for you, $75 is for me. And that's how he started making his money. He told me, Mama, get used to this. This is just the beginning. This is what I'll be doing from now on. Although no one could deny his natural ability and boxing skills, his loud outfits, unpredictable behavior, and questionable ring tactics earned him the reputation as the bad boy of boxing. I only got the opinion, but it, it works for me, you know? 
And the more it keeps working for you, the more it's gonna keep doing it, the more they're gonna get, keep criticizing you. Some people like it, some people don't. That's the name of the game. And the name of the game for Camacho is winning. And win he did. By the time he was 21, he earned his first world championship by knocking out Bazooka Limon for the WBC Super Featherweight title. Two years later, he took Jose Luis Ramirez WBC Lightweight Championship. And in 1989, he captured his third world title by outpointing the legendary Boom Boom Mancini to win the WBO Junior Welterweight Crown. Many believe this rambunctious and colorful kid from Harlem had become the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. It seemed at that time as if his career was unstoppable, his future unlimited. That is, until the inevitable pressures of fame began to take their toll. Slowly but surely, management problems, personal troubles, and brushes with the law began to take over his life. Definitely got burned out. You know, uh, I, st I started hating it, because everywhere I go is boxing it. He tells me, boo, don't worry about what they say. As long as they keep talking about you, you got it back. When they're not talking about you, then you're in trouble. So give them anything to talk about. Don't worry about it. Maybe I could have regretted it. Maybe I couldn't help it. But I went through like this learning process. But that's where the that's where the bad boy image maintained, you know? Camacho has now put that period behind him and rededicated himself to the ring. Over the past two and a half years, he has fought five times and raised his record to 41 and 0. Although Camacho will always remain somewhat of a mystery, he is clearly no longer fighting his way out of the streets of Harlem. For now, he faces a greater challenge, fighting his way into the history books. To do so, he must beat the only man with a better record than his in a fight he is obsessed about and dreamt about for years. Julio Cesar Chavez. Even in the chaotic world of boxing, it was inevitable that Julio Cesar Chavez and Hector Camacho would meet in the ring. Both turned pro in 1980, have never lost a fight, won numerous championships, and have been considered at different times to be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. But it would be difficult, if not impossible, to find two men with more divergent backgrounds and dissimilar personalities. For while Camacho has earned a reputation for flamboyancy, Julio Cesar Chavez, in a quiet, workmanlike fashion, has become, with his 81-0 record, the most impressive fighter in boxing. Dile que realmente yo lo hago todo natural, dile. Actually, everything I do is natural. I don't know. That's how it happens in the ring. Julio Cesar Chavez was raised in a modest home in the small rural city of Culiacan, high in the mountains of Mexico. His father was a train conductor and with his wife worked hard to raise 10 children. At the moment he was born, the doctor told me he was going to be one of the best boxers or soccer players in the world. He went after boxing because in Mexico, as many other Mexicans do, he realized that boxing is an opportunity for the people that need a, a different type of life uh, to find a decent way of going through, through this world and uh, in our society. Since turning pro in 1980, he's won five world titles in three different weight divisions while compiling an amazing 81-0 record. Although it's difficult for non-fight fans to understand the magnitude of this achievement, it's comparable to Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. In an age where fighters rarely have three bouts a year, Chavez has been fighting and beating at least one opponent every two months for the last 12 years. It's probably the greatest start in history, including Willie Pep, Ray Robinson, Anyone. My guy's got what? 320 straight victories? How many is it? I lost count of that. I, I lost count at 250. You know, anybody who can do that is amazing. Although his perfect record has earned him the recognition he deserves, he is most famous for the fight he almost lost. The fight against the then undefeated and highly touted IBM Junior welterweight champion, Meldrick Tim. 
Taylor, going into the final round, was ahead by wide margins on two out of the three judges' scorecards. Yet throughout the fight, Chavez, with the same tenacious style of a young Mike Tyson, had been punishing Taylor's body with his vicious right hand and legendary left hook. Chavez is a throwback to the old fighter. He has a, um, an awesome body attack that's unbelievable he that's how he slow guys up because a lot of guys can't take that them body shots like that and bam he gets him out of there with only seconds left in the fight that's exactly what he did he will beat the count and he will survive this round it appears you can't be saved by the bell of the final round that's why you stop it this guy takes you apart round by round with that, that vicious vicious body attack that he has uh, Meldrick Taylor certainly is not, this, not the same anymore. Rosario, you guys that, that, that really, really give Julio a gun that really goes out and attacks and tries to fight and goes out to win and not survive, never, ever be the same again. But the one opponent Chavez would most like to destroy is his longtime nemesis, the three-time world champion, Hector Macho Camacho. This fight with Camacho excites me. It's the fight Mexico and all the world have been waiting to see. You might indeed be hard-pressed to apply the classic bromide, clothes make the man, to the sweet science. But in the case of Hector Macho Camacho, you've got to lend it some credence. His flair for the flamboyant never fails to animate his ringside wardrobe. But is this gilded garb more than just a show? Or is it, perhaps, another psychological weapon to add to his boxing arsenal? For answers, we went straight to the bold rumble of Pummel himself. The look, the feel, the style. This hombre knows from clothes. Unmistakably macho. I wear this clothes so I can feel good, look good, okay, and do good things. <laughs> With myself. <laughs> we asked the wee macho matador who first influenced his choice of threads. I follow the trails of Elvis. Okay, Elvis. I think he was very unique, one of a kind. And his own way of wanting to be very freakish, very creative. Uh, Bruce Lee. You know, I'm Elvis and Bruce put together. Is there anything even this preening pugilist wouldn't wear in the ring? That plan to come one time is as a, as a ballet. I'm a ballet girl. I won't come as that. We then inquired of the colorful champion what exactly are his colors. Black, because I'm very mysterious, I guess. You know, this is in, in red because I'm very fiery, I guess. But all this is just an illusion that's in my head, you know, and I enjoy myself. I have a lot of fun being me. So what would be the ultimate statement in ring wear for the macho man? I love to wear nothing. I mean, I was born that way. I love my body. And now, step aside Elsa Clench in the MTV House of Style as we proudly strut the runway with our own look at the latest in fall fashions. In ladies' wear, the look is vibrant, sexy, sophisticated. In menswear, classic lines permeated with a real sense of today. In macho wear, couturiers beware, anything goes. Here, Hector sports an all-American look, very Apollo Creed, that seems to be saying to all 50 states, hey, USA, dig the macho man. Hector's all awash in feathers and fringe as he salutes the Native American in a rough-hewn ensemble crowned with a festive war bonnet. Whoa! Gladiator alert as breastplate and plumed headgear signal a return to man's most feral roots. Veiny, beady, beachy, macho. What will Hector wear against Chavez? You're just going to have to tune in the fight to be dazzled by his latest display of fast-track finery. Now back to a guy who always makes a fashion statement, Steve Albert. For many years, the boxing world has eagerly awaited the fight between Julio Cesar Chavez and Hector Camacho. It is, after all, a championship fight between the two men with the most extraordinary records in boxing. But it's the fight itself, the battle inside the ring, that has created such anticipation and caused so much commotion. For when these two square off with their conflicting personalities and contrasting fighting styles, we are bound to see a war inside the ring.
I guess I should put a bad boy in boxing, the incorrigible one. Oh, I love it. Whoa, 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 and that's an element of promotion. They love me for Julio Cesar Chavez. He can say many things with his mouth, but the reality is everyone knows that I will demonstrate I am the best September 12th. It's great to talk with your mouth, but it is another thing to show it. Although this press conference grandstanding is entertaining, the real show begins when the fighters step onto that stage we call a ring. Camacho claims he'll use his hand speed and unorthodox moves to take an early lead over the notoriously slow-starting Chavez. I don't take advantage of it. I can't help but take advantage of it. Because I'm faster, I'm going to dictate the fight, and he's going to be trying to counter me all the time. Not too many fights he fought know how to hold, know how to spin, know how to turn, know how to get out of there, hold him again, spin, get up a quick combination. Frustrated. I got all that it takes to do it. Needless to say, Chavez claims it'll be a very different kind of fight. One of the best at cutting off the ring, he will continually come forward and try to trap Camacho against the ropes with his punishing blows to the body and head. For this fight, I will start off fast. It will be very exciting because I'll force him to fight. The strategies are clear. The tactics clearly outlined. But the question remains, who will win this fight? For years, this answer has been passionately debated as boxing's most prominent citizens choose to disagree. There is no question but that what Julio Cesar Chavez's fight plan is. He will come on as inevitably as the tide. He fights in a square box. And if Camacho lets him find that box, Camacho's got a very bad time of it. Great fight, great matchup. Uh, I think the one guy that could beat Chavez is Camacho Camacho because of his style. I think he's going to wind up winning the fight. I think Macho Camacho will beat Chavez. I think Chavez uh, has got in his mind there's nobody out there can beat him. He tears the body down before you you got a chance to realize what's happening and, and get your hands where they should be. If Camacho, you know, trains hard, buckles down, keeps his jab out in front of him, gets off with his uh, left hand, counter punches, stick, hit move, get out of there, he can win the fight without any problems. I am confident I will win the fight on September 12th. This is the fight I have been waiting for for many, many years. This is a real championship fight. Because when you're a champion, you take everything. And I'm going to take everything, and then it's going to always stay there. And you're going to be taken from me. It's going to be there in the history book. You know, it's one of the greatest fights ever. The fuse is set. The clock is ticking. The time bomb set in motion 12 years ago will finally explode Saturday, September 12th. It's Julio Cesar Chavez versus Hector Camacho, live only on pay-per-view. I'm Steve Albert, and I'd like to thank you for watching Time Bomb, Chavez versus Camacho. So long, everybody.